But then there's another fact, which is that I was being surveilled by the U.S. government, intensely surveilled by the U.S. government. And this came out, they admitted it, the NSA admitted it a couple of years ago that they were up in my Signal account. And then they leaked it to the New York Times. They did that again before I left. And I know that because two New York Times reporters, one of whom I actually like a lot, uh, said, oh, you're going, and called other people, oh, he's going to interview Putin. I hadn't told anybody that, like anybody, like my wife, two producers, that's it. So they got that from the government. Then I'm over there, and of course I want to see Snowden, who I admire. And so I have a, we have a mutual friend, so I got his text and come on over, and, and Snowden does not want publicity at all. Mm -hmm. And so, but I really wanted to have dinner with him. So we had dinner in my hotel room at the Four Seasons in Moscow. And I said, I tried to convince him, you know, I'd love to do an interview, shoot it on my iPhone. You know, I'd love to take a picture together and put it on the internet because I just want to show support because mm -hmm. I think he's been railroaded. He, he had no interest in living in Russia, no intention of being in Russia. The whole thing is a lie. But anyway, whatever, all this stuff. And he just said, respectfully, I'd rather not anyone know that we met. Great. The only reason I'm telling you this is because, and I didn't tell anybody and I didn't text it to anybody, okay, except him. Mm -hmm. Semaphore, Semaphore um, runs this piece saying, report, reporting information they got from the US intel agencies, leaking against me using my money in my name in a supposedly free country. Mm -hmm. They run this piece saying I'd met with Snowden, like it was a crime or something. So again, my interest is in the United States and preserving freedoms here, the ones that I grew up with. And if you have a media establishment that acts as an auxiliary of, or acts as employees of the national security state, you don't have a free country. And that's where we are. And I'm not guessing, because I spent my entire life in that world. 33 years I worked in big news companies. And so I know how it works. I know the people involved in it. I could name them, Ben Smith of Semaphore. <laughs> among many others. And I find that really objectionable, not just on principle either, in effect, in practice. I don't want to live in that kind of country. And people are like, they externalize all of their anxiety about this, I have noticed. So it's like, Russia's not free. Yeah, I know. You know, neither is you know, Burkina Faso. Like most countries aren't free actually, but we are. We're the United States, we're different. And that's my concern, preserving that is my concern. And so they get so exercised about what's happening in other parts of the world, places they've never been, know nothing about. It's almost a way of ignoring what's happening in their own country right around them. I find it so strange and sad and weird. So the NSA was tracking you? As, do you think CIA was? Who's, is uh, people still tracking you? Look, one of the things I did before I went, um, just because of the business I'm in, all of us are in, and just because we live here, you know, we all have theories about secure communications channels. Like Signal is secure, Telegraph isn't, or WhatsApp is owned by Mark Zuckerberg. You can't trust it. Okay. So I thought, you know, before I go over here, I was getting all this, we're having all these conversations, my producers and I about this. And I decide, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna actually find out like what's really going on. So I talked to two people um, who would know, trust me. And that's I, it's all I can say. And I, I hate to be like, oh, I talk to people who would know, but I can't do it. But I, I mean it, mm -hmm. they would know. And both of them said exactly the same thing, which is, are you joking? Nothing is secure. Mm -hmm. Everything is monitored all the time. If, if state actors are involved, I mean, you can keep the, you know, whatever, the Malaysian mafia from reading your text, probably. You cannot keep the big intel services from reading your text. It's not possible, any of them, or listening to your calls. So... And that was the firm conclusion of people who've been involved in it, you know, for a long time, decades, both in both cases. So I just thought, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm not sending a ton of naked pictures of myself to anybody. Not a ton, just a little. Not, not a ton. <laughs> I'm 54, dude. Probably All not right. too many. All right. um, but but you see, so I'm like, I, I'm just, so the guys, I travel with three people I work with who I love, who I've been around the world with for many years, and I know them really, really well. And they all got, you know, separate phones and I'm leaving my other phone back in New York or whatever. And I just decided I don't care actually. And I resent having to no privacy um, because privacy is a prerequisite for freedom, <laughs> um, but I can't change it. And so I have the same surveilled cell phone. And, you know, I do switch them out because 
there it is. Uh, because if you have too much spyware on your phone, this is true, it wrecks the battery. <laughs> and <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious, it does. And we got, it was, I don't know, five or six years ago, we went to North Korea and um, my phone started acting crazy. And so I talked to someone on the National Security Council who's who actually who called me about this somehow knew that your phone is being surveilled by the South Korean government. I was like, why the, I, I like the South Korean government. Why would they do that? Um, because they want more information. They thought I was talking to Trump or whatever. So, but I could tell because all of a sudden the thing would just drain in like 45 minutes. So that is, that's a downside. <laughs> so you, you keep uh, switching phones, getting new phones for the battery life. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I try not to do it. You know, I'm kind of, flinty Yankee type in some ways. So I don't, I don't like to spend a thousand dollars with a freaking Apple corporation too often, but yeah, I do. I mean, you say it lightly, but it's really troublesome that you as a journalist would be tracked. Well, they leaked it to Semaphore and they leaked it to the New York Times. Look, it's, I would even put up, well, there's nothing I can do. So I have to put up with everything. Okay. But I would probably not be actively angry about being surveilled I, because I'm just so old and I'm, I actually do pay my taxes. I'm not sleeping with the makeup artist or whatever. So I don't care that much. The fact that they are leaking against me, that the Intel services in the United States are actively engaged in US politics yeah. and media, that's so unacceptable. That makes democracy impossible. There's no defense of that. And yet NBC News, Ken Delanian, and the rest will defend it. And it's like, and, and not just on NBC News, by the way, on the supposedly conservative channels too, they will defend it. And there's no defending that. You can't have democracy if the Intel services are tampering in elections and information, period.